Should you be a software engineer in the year 2024? Hi, I'm Cody, and I've been a software engineer for about 15 years. And we should actually change this question to what the real question people are asking, which is, should I be a software engineer when AI might just replace me anyways? And this is one of the, like, the most triggering questions on the internet that just brings up a ton of discussion. And I wanted to put my two cents in and try to make some predictions on what 2024 is gonna look like. So in this video, I wanna talk about uh, four different sections. I wanna talk about the, the job market currently and what 2024 might look like. And then I wanna talk in general about like what we think about software because that's gonna enlighten us into the next section, which is I wanna talk about how AI will influence the software lifecycle. And then the last section is uh, my, my suggestions, my feedback, what I think someone going into the field or thinking about the field should consider when they when they try to jump into this this crazy new world. Okay, first off, we have to admit that like AI has kind of ruined the entire job market. The problem is uh, both sides is both sides. So there's uh, job applicants that are firing off like 500 applications to trying to find jobs, and they can do that with an assistance with AI, ChatGPT to build up cover letters to like print out new resumes making it possible for someone to actually send out 500 applications. And then on the other side of things, that has caused a lot of jobs to open up a job description and then all of a sudden have three to 4,000 applicants, and sometimes even more than that, and they have to try to figure out how to sift through that. They need to sift through, through thousands of applications. So what, what do they do? They use AI to like, sift through, filter out all the candidates that aren't really serious and trying to find a, a more manageable amount of like 20 to 50 candidates. And even then, that's a lot of people to interview and to think about when trying to think about just one job opening. So that's the problem in the market. There's, there's uh, job applicants that are using AI to blast off everything this way. And then the, on the other end, there are jobs and businesses that are not only having a hard time like just easily filtering things out. So your application may not even see a person, but using it to just filter it down just for a more manageable number. So the problem is that there's, there's problems on both sides of the equation and we need to figure out a way so that people can apply and look for jobs in a normal sense for businesses and for people. Something's gotta change, right? So before we get into the details of how AI is gonna influence like software development in the first place, we gotta think about what software is in the life cycle sense of like how software is built and maintained and what do software engineers actually do. To oversimplify things, there's software usually drops into two different buckets. There's, uh, there's brand new software, so it's like the greenfield jobs where you're creating code for the first time and you're trying to solve the problem and get it out there to work in production. The other bucket most people call just like legacy code. That's code that's been in production, it has a ton of production data and is there to be maintained and added onto in the future. So those are two distinct like sets of coding projects that software engineers deal with on the daily. So when I look online, nearly every single conversation about AI, it usually it focuses on the first part about greenfield applications, code being written for the first time, new projects, no context, no existing systems, just something being built. And you're absolutely right, and everyone's absolutely right, that entire part of the industry is going to change dramatically. It already is being changed dramatically. People are able to spin up applications and businesses out of thin air within a week. And that is wild. That's crazy change of how we're going to be operating from here on out. That's not going to change. Now, there's another thing is that uh, I don't see enough conversation around how the other side of the industry is going to be handled how we're gonna deal with legacy code, stuff that already exists and needs to be maintained and added onto. This is where things are gonna get a little bit more complicated. In this regard, for legacy systems, people are gonna be able to bug fix and create features faster than they normally do. But the problem is, is when you have a, a system that's been around for five plus years, is that you start to find something called like the secret sauce. The problem is that the secret sauce is the gap between how a system is built and how the system is actually used. Business users and people that are using the system to get their job done will manipulate and change and abuse the system in whatever way they want to in order to get their job done. That is removed from how the engineers see it. Engineers don't see how users are abusing the system. There's a gap there. There's a gap in understanding of how the business works and what the code should be doing. And if you've been coding for longer than a week, 
you find out that naming things in software is the hardest thing in the world. Because of that, like what the code says it does and what it should be doing are two different things. You can find code that's been around for six years and no one knows what it does because, I don't know, the method and the variables don't make any sense. That's where AI is going to fall on its face because it has no way to, to gain that tribal knowledge from what the business needs and wants and what the engineers have to add to the system. So what it kind of boils down to is that the problem is, is that people can be stupid. We, we don't do the, the right thing. We don't name the things in the right way. We can't explain what we exactly want. And therefore, if AI has to go off of those few things, those few faults that we humans have, there's no way that AI is going to have the ability to like bridge that gap for you. It can't think for you. It can maybe help you along the way, but overall, you still need someone that is able to bridge the gap and figure out what's happening today and build for the next day, build for tomorrow. And on top of that, the code that AI and the engineer has to build is they have to make sure that that new code doesn't ruin the existing functionality of the code that's running the business today. That's called regression testing, making sure there's no regressions in the system that make things worse. So what does this all mean? This, I, it means a lot. I think, I think in the year 2024, we're going to have a long, we're going to have a hard time figuring out how the job market's going to work now that every, everyone, employers and employees have the ability to use AI. We're going to have to figure out a new way and it's going to be painful for most of the year trying to find jobs and list jobs. I think that when it comes to greenfield projects and getting businesses off the ground, that has already started to change dramatically as how people use AI to build things out of thin air and in record time. That's gonna be great. That is already a great thing for most engineers. I think we have a long ways to go before we can have AI help us in the legacy department, maintaining and building this software. And I think also we're gonna actually need more engineers because we're gonna have all of this code that's being built with AI in this next year. And in a couple of years, that code will either, either die out or it will need to be maintained. And so you're gonna need the people that not only know how the AI works and how the business works, but then also be able to maintain and build off of that. That's where we need to get to. And I think, so if you were to ask me today, if you should get into software engineering in 2024, I still emphatically say yes, but, but the entire industry is not going to be the same thing as it was for the last 20 years. This is a whole new age and it's exciting, a little terrifying, but also just like a crazy world to grow up in right now. So I would say you can still get it in 2024. It's just going to be a little different. I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to know more about my history, I did my entire 15 year career in 10 minutes in this video. So go ahead and check that out and I'll see you on the other side. All right. Thanks guys.